All right, welcome back to Hot Topics TV. You already know if the topic is hot, we're on it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get right into this story. Man, oh man, listen, it took them four months. Let me just go ahead and say it from the beginning. It took them four months to issue an arrest warrant and go pick this girl up after she killed that man. Now listen, if the story was the other way around where it had been him, accused or suspected of killing her he would have been locked up a long time ago if the story had been different where it had been a black female or african-american female that had killed that man she would have been locked up a long time ago but you know snowflake got handled with some very soft gloves instagram model arrested after her boyfriend was stabbed to death in Florida apartment this was the first time I heard this okay check this out some people are calling her Instagram model some people are saying that she was a only fans model I don't know maybe she's uh, working two jobs maybe she is working and earning on both platforms maybe she gets money on Instagram and she gets money on only fans when the story originally broke the story said a only fans wealthy female Killed or suspected of killing her boyfriend in their Miami high-rise apart luxury apartment. If you don't know it, they make a whole lot of money sometimes on OnlyFans. There are people, regular people, who ended up making millions of dollars on OnlyFans. Whatever they do on OnlyFans, that's their business. Some people show ass and shake titties. Other people go through their lifestyle and people are interested, so they tune in. Law enforcement in Hawaii on Wednesday arrested social media model Courtney Clenny on a charge of second-degree murder with a deadly weapon. Hawaii County Police said in a statement that they assisted the U.S. Marshals Service as they arrested the 26-year-old in a place called Lopa Hoho. Can't make this up. H-O-E, H-O-E, Lopa Hoho which is on the Big Island. Officers used an arrest warrant that was issued by the Miami-Dade County in Florida. She is being held at the East Hawaii Detention Center while she awaits for her initial court appearance in Hilo District Court on Thursday, police said. Will she be extradited back to Miami to face those charges or will she continue to stay in Hawaii? Let's find out. What was she doing in Hawaii? A lot of people want to know. We'll get into that also. The police statement gave no details about the accusations against her as far as her killing her boyfriend or suspected of killing her African boyfriend, but we're going to talk about that. All right. But the Miami Herald reported that Clenny is accused of fatally stabbing her boyfriend in April, April, May, June, July, and we are now in August. So you can pretty much say over four months. Going on five months, it took them for her to be arrested. Her Miami defense lawyer, Frank Preto, told the Miami Herald that she was in Hawaii while she was in rehabilitation. She was in rehabilitation for substance abuse and for post-traumatic stress disorder. In other words, let me tell you what's surrounding this. So her defense story is this. She was attacked by her boyfriend who was volatile and violent and she had to defend herself listen dead man tells no tales he's dead she's trying to free herself she has enough money to get a very good lawyer and at this point if she makes accusations against him they will not be backed up or he will not be here to shoot a disclaimer he will not be here to say that's a lie you're the one that hit me. I was only blocking you every time you were trying to hit me. I never hit you, Courtney. Stop telling lies on me. He's not going to be here to say that because he's dead. A video has surfaced, however, of her beating the daylights out of him in a hotel, in an elevator. Apparently, this is the elevator of their luxury high-rise building. Whoever released this video to the public, they... 
I don't know if they're trying to defend her or try to make a not make it look so bad on her. So they released the video with no sound. I am absolutely sure there is sound that goes along with this video. Here's my first take. When I saw the video and I saw how aggressive she was, I can only imagine the language that went along with that video. You know, sometimes you're dating someone that's outside of your race and you've never been called the N-word by them before until they're angry. I've seen people do that. And the way she was carrying on in that video, beating him up and him just trying to like block blows to his head and his face. Hmm. I could only imagine what was being said in her moment of anger in that elevator. Neighbors in the building have come forward to say that that's a regular thing that they did in the elevator. See, here's the problem, though. The neighbors hear a whole lot of noise but they don't know who's doing the noise making they don't know who's doing the beating up part of it they might hear them arguing a lot and they hear stuff breaking you know and they hear stop it get off me but they don't know who's doing the beating apparently she was the aggressor and now she is in hawaii post-traumatic stress because this whole situation was stressful to her she committed a killing and she is stressed out about it. And it was under circumstances where she claims she had to defend herself. Also, substance abuse issues. Was she high and drunk when she stabbed her boyfriend to death? That'll all be found out in a court of law. I'm completely shocked. By the way, I don't think that's going to be found out in the court of law. And the reason is, after she did what she did to him, she was questioned briefly by police and she was let go imagine that imagine this domestic situation me and my wife we're, we get into an argument at the house she ends up dead stabbed to death they know that i did it they take me down to the police station they question me i give them a story and they let me go five months almost later is when they decide to pick me back up her attorney said I'm in complete shock, especially since we've been cooperating with the investigation and we offered to voluntarily surrender her if she was ever charged. We look forward to clearing her name in court. Hmm. According to NBC News, the Miami Police Department has previously described Obumseli's death. That's his name, Obumseli. He was Nigerian. The Abumseli's death as a domestic violence related incident that involved a physical altercation that ended with a stabbing. They went through all that length to say that his lover stabbed him to death during an argument. That's all that was. His lover stabbed him to death during an argument. The attorney for her has previously described the couple's relationship as clearly toxic. <laughs> no shit. And said that there is clear evidence of self-defense in this matter. Wow. Well, you know what? It's an attorney's job to do that. It's an attorney's job to get their client off. I say this all the time. So I don't even pay too much attention to what the attorney says. First of all, that attorney was not there throughout the years. And they were together for a couple of years. That attorney was not there throughout the years that they were together, but he can make the same assumption that we could looking in from the outside that this was clearly a toxic relationship, whether it was toxic on both ends or it was just his client, her, Courtney, the Instagram model, the OnlyFans model. Maybe it was her that was the toxic one and her Nigerian lover, Abumseli, was so happy to be with her because she was his type oh in case you missed it she has money doesn't matter that she gets it on only fans but she she most men wouldn't want their wives having an only fans account because in order to get a lot of money on only fans you probably are going to have to get a little risque right however that's not neither here nor there different strokes for different folks but he was happy with who he was with, even if she was toxic. This led to a whole nother type of conversation 
because you had black women that were saying, listen, if she was a black woman, he would not have put up with half of what she did for not even a second. And the worst part was there were social media messages from Obumseli, the Nigerian, her lover, before his death, that spoke of black women in a way that was less than pleasing. There were things there where he said stuff like, alluded to fact and said stuff like, hey, they're not my type anyways. And they're ghetto. Most of them are ghetto and they act a certain way. And I'm not into that kind of, oh, did I not tell you I'm not into that kind of uh, woman. And he also said that he was his company that he kept, his group, his friends. He was like the only black guy there. You know, those kind of things. So when it came time for the black community to rally around his situation and say, hey, arrest that girl. You know, most black women were saying more like, ah, it's a sad situation. What happened to him? He's somebody's son. I would not wish that on anybody. However, since we weren't his type and we were the worst type ever and he wasn't into us, then y'all can continue to leave us out of this at this point then that's the, that's exactly the reason why you didn't hear much about it from, especially from black women after the fact so she was able to leave mainland usa head over to hawaii go somewhere in the tropics probably had an umbrella in her drink you know she was in rehab her attorney says and she was there getting some help for her substance abuse issue i don't know what substance or substances she was on weed, coke, heroin, whatever she was taking. And she was also there to deal with her post-traumatic stress because she is stressed out. Her attorney said Abum Sally attacked her and choked her that evening. Courtney had no choice but to meet his force with her force. He's saying that as if he was there. That's what she told him. Funny thing is, if you watch the elevator clip, you will see he's not an aggressor. She's the aggressor. And I've heard people, there are other people, friends of the couple, who have come forward to say they had never seen him become aggressive towards her, violent towards her. It is more like she was always punching him, hitting him, kicking him, throwing stuff at him, breaking things, screaming at him, and he would normally be furling his hands around trying to like block the things she was throwing, whether it was punches or objects, right? And that's the kind of relationship it was, and he did put up with it until the point where he died. He got killed in it. So now her defense is she was attacked and she was choked that evening, and she had no choice but to stab him to kill him, to defend herself. A cousin of Abum Sally has previously said that the family has no cause to believe that this was a case of self-defense. Toby was raised in a very strong family with strong morals and strong values. He does not come from that. In other words, he does not come from an abusive family who teaches abuse or men allow men to abuse women. Ha! <sighs> she appeared on OnlyFans under the name Courtney Taylor. And on OnlyFans, she had over 2 million followers. On Instagram, she had over 2 million followers, rather. Here's the thing. They don't want to hear that in court because a lot of people are raised good that end up going bad. So the way you were raised does not really is not really a testament to how you have become as an adult. Many people have been raised good, you know, from a strong family that have high moral values and good ethics and they were taught to be a certain way upstanding law-abiding tax-paying citizen and yet ever since their teenage years they chose to pick up criminality or they chose to pick up violence and so that's not going to fly to help him to bolster his case and again he's not here so he cannot defend himself to say listen I never hit her. I have never hit her. She's always the one that's hitting me. If only that stab did not kill him, we would have been able to hear his side of the story. But again, his family 
coming forward to say stuff like this. He was not raised this way. He's from a strong family, strong morals, strong values. Uh, I can see the black community right now, especially the women. They're going to say, wow, he's from a black family with strong morals and strong values. And he had such strong opinion, strong negative opinions about black women. And his dream choice of a woman was a white woman. How strong were those values in that black family that you're talking about that he did not see beauty in the type of woman that brought him into this world? We can go on and on about the black white stuff, okay? Like the fact that there are a lot of guys out there who don't find beauty in black women. A lot of black guys that don't find beauty in black women even though they were brought here to earth by a black woman, a lot of them, that same black woman cared for them in many cases without even the help of a father or a present dad. And they grow up to betray. You're the worst type of woman ever. I wouldn't want a woman like that. So that's where that with this case, we're going to follow this case and see if they're going to let her go or if there's actually going to be a conviction in this story. Leave your comments in the comment section below. How do you feel about it? Are you one of the black women that feel like, hey, he didn't have any likes for us anyway, so 